20 experience as well over the last eight or nine years, I've also realized that I have strong beliefs, but they're loosely held. So at one time, I thought that the keto, the ketogenic way of eating was the panacea to all the world's issues. I literally thought if everyone was kind of keto 100% of the time, we'd all be good and all ailments would go away. But as you start to learn more, you start to realize, hey, look, keto is a fantastic metabolic state. It can be used in a therapeutic way, such as in your husband's case. Um, it can be used to treat, treat many things. But do we need to exist in that kind of metabolic state all year round? And that obviously depends on many variables, such as where you're based in the world, what time of year it is, what your ancestry is, and all different things. So I think as you, as you go along that journey, you start realizing, you start understanding more about the ancest like an ancestrally compliant framework. You start understanding foods better. So yeah, I think it can, it can be useful at the start, but I think you need to maybe, as, as, you're, as you learn more, you can kind of shake the shackles of the, the badge. And, I mean, and, and just say, hey, I'm human rather than I'm keto. I think, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Because I was all like, when I first, I was like, keto is the way to health. And then actually, you know, we've evolved to be able to use ketones and glucose, not just ketones. Therefore, we should be in ketosis some of the time and incorporate intermittent fasting at times. And we should eat fruits and high carb vegetables when they're in season. Um, and be as natural as possible in that respect, wherever we live, and then look at your ancestry, because obviously the closer to the equator you live or your ancestors are from, then you probably can cope with carbs better than if you're from the far northern or really southern hemisphere where it's a lot colder and you could only have access to fats um, for fuel sometimes all year round. Um, so you've got to look, you know, where are my ancestors from? And if they're, if they're kind of more Nordic, then you think a northern hemisphere fats are probably more suited for you and if you're closer to the to the equator then where tropical fruit naturally grows then that's probably a healthier option but the only way to really know is to experiment and you know see what works best and also know that what works for you now isn't what will always work for you and yeah. that there's you know our bodies are constantly changing depending on the kind of work that we're doing um, and our hormones as they develop um, our energy expenditure and also being male and female because from what I know going back to ketosis because when you're in ketosis you're essentially replicating uh, <clears throat> how our bodies would have been during a famine or a lack or a shortage of food that's why it's amazing for optimizing your cognitive focus because you're better at hunting and, and mm -hmm. sniffing out food laser and focus. being very stealthy laser focus so it's great for business people who just want to focus as well um, but if you extend that period for too long, your hormones are going to say, wait a minute, there's no food coming. I don't, getting pregnant is a really bad idea right now. So my hormones are just going to shut down because I don't want to give birth to a baby when there's no food. And so for women, being on a ketogenic diet for too long can mess up their hormones. And I actually did that myself because my first year of keto, I was like 100% all in. And then I was like, wait, my body stopped working. So you have to cycle in and out um, and do what's sensible rather than being just totally dogmatic. And also to think, okay, I thought this was true once and now I think slightly differently and that's okay because we're all learning and you know, even that the doctors and all the research that's coming out, science is changing every day. So there's no black and white, it's all kind of gray as long as you move in a direction yeah. of testing. It, it ebbs and flows and I think, it, mm. you know, a ketogenic metabolism, it's something that's innate within us as human beings. It's there as a tool. And that's how, you know, we kind of see it. And that's how we positioned our brand Hunter and Gather. And when we launched back three and a half years ago, it was just before keto was becoming more popular in the UK. But we could have just, we could have jumped onto keto and used that as, as marketing. But in fact, we was like, no, no we, we recognize keto is a really great tool for many, many people at different times. But we think in this kind of, in our Western society, if we say, hey, 